Hello there. Hello there. I'm doing our holiday gift guide to like all of our favorite products and stuff. And it's hard because I don't just want to list every single thing. You know, not everything's our favorite, but we've tried it all. So I'm really trying to pinpoint the ones I highly recommend. It's also a Monday and I'm Gassy McGee. Why? We had a Quest Pizza on Saturday night and it's still just <laughs> doing damage. My lesson is learned. And I taught Mega all about League of Legends last night. What did you learn? Yeah, I actually like woke up and I was like, oh, I actually enjoyed learning about that. Maybe I'll like watch it on my own and see how I feel. I yeah. think the junglers are the coolest. They can do like sneak attacks. The strategy involved is, I guess, is like the coolest part about it. What are you doing, stretching? Good stretch. It's about nine. 8.30. No. I'm gonna make bulletproof coffee. Oh, I'm drinking black coffee with some salt and some sweetener just to get the belly moving. I just placed an order for delivery for Friday of a bunch of awesome stuff. So I wanna let you guys know how I found this place. It's like, apparently there's like six or seven different places that will deliver grass-fed meats, like good butters, raw milks, eggs, like farmer's eggs raw and cheese. stuff. Raw cheeses. So I got a bunch of that delivered. It's coming on Friday. So maybe I'll do like an unboxing when that gets here. The site I used was Real Milk Finder. So this is just showing you places that will sell you or deliver raw milk. But generally those places are like farms. They have farm animals too. So if you're not into the milk, you can get eggs, you can get meats. You can just kind of like find one in your area. It has all the states listed. Realmilk.com. And don't be like warded off when you read the raw milk because this is raw milk for pets. But they technically, they have to say raw milk for pets because they can't sell it unpasteurized like legally for human consumption. You know what I think you need to read? The untold story of milk. <laughs> you need to read this. This is the worst purchase Matt has ever made in his life. The untold story of milk. That doesn't sound riveting. He to will you. never read. I'm just I when I saw this, I wasn't <laughs> even like, oh, what a dumbo. I was like furious. I was like were. so angry. I was like, what a waste of money. Maybe I'll go through it one day myself. So we're going to the gym later. We got two podcasts today. Seamland and Allie Miller. Here's my bulletproof coffee. Two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of MCT oil, and I've been doing a scoop of collagen lately. And look at Mega's wall she painted. She didn't get blue painter's tape, she got like blue duct tape. So when you take it down, it just tears all the paint off the wall. Look, all right here. Can't really see it. We're not painters, guys. But that wall is gonna be painted eventually anyway. How did you get blue way over here? What is this? I touched it with my hand. Oh my God. Julie's got blue in his hair. Everyone at daycare probably thinks he's a bad boy. Or he's like, yeah. Just a little. You can see. Yeah. He's such a bad boy. We're vlogging, so Matt's vlogging right now. <laughs> Team meeting. So um, aloe, which, you know, aloe we use topically as like an anti-inflammatory for sunburn. Well, it's also very oopy goopy and kind of delivers this L-glutamine and DGL. What did we talk about with Seam? Oh, we talked about a ton of cool stuff. We talked about longevity, autophagy. And so I was definitely wrong. I was thinking autophagy. I feel like we've talked to people who say conflicting things that it only kicks in like after like a, a 24 hour period, it's more longer fast, like 24, 36 and so on. But we were talking about how autophagy can kick in at the 16 hour mark. So 16, eight fast, you could be getting those great benefits as well. I think Seam was on point with most of his info. Yeah, he was a, he's really smart and has a lot of great info. Cause what he said, and this is how it works is like, there's the depletion of certain nutrients is what triggers autophagy. If you're doing a keto diet to begin with, you get into a state of autophagy much quicker cause you don't have to deplete your body of glucose, glycogen, you're already there. It's mainly just depleting the body of certain amino acids. If you don't know what autophagy is, it's basically just your old cells dying. So like you taking have- Taking out the trash. Taking out the trash. But it seems awesome, I love him. Yeah, so definitely check him out. YouTube His channel. YouTube channel. Done at the gym. It's a good workout. 
How was your workout? Hard? It was good. Um, I did five sets of five 290 pound deadlifts. You got five on the last set or you got six? I got seven on the last set. I got 120 by 10. It's already about two-ish maybe, 215. So we're gonna eat when we get home. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking, doing what makes you happy. Instead of like doing what makes you money, what makes you unhappy. For me, it took a really long time to realize that's how you should live your life. Cause I always lived for like my family. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, and like, you know, I had to work as hard as, like, you know, be as smart as my brother, go to an Ivy League school, go to law school, have these useless degrees that, you know, for me didn't pay off in the end. And law school made me very unhappy as a person. You know, I went to law school for the wrong reasons. I went because of my dad, because of my brother, because of society. Isn't that why you do most because things of in money. life, though? Yeah. Most of what I'm motivated by is doing better than others. I think that's most of what a lot of people are motivated by. I mean, I don't think that's always a negative, though, right? Because then it pushes you. Yeah. You have to strive for something, otherwise you'll fall for anything. If you keep it in check, it's probably good to a point. What was the saying you just said? I just it was like <laughs> it was half of an actual saying, right? Yeah. Oh, what I find to be very true, we mentioned this on the podcast today. You get what you think you deserve. And I think Mega is the biggest test case for this because she really thinks she deserves a lot, unjustifiably. <laughs> And it's coming to fruition. So it's not I to say, a fault for me. For some no. people, it's probably to a fault. It increased my expectancy of my life for sure. Yeah, I've definitely um, given you that, and you've given me the like hardworking quality. Like I can't now just assume it's gonna fall into my lap like I always did. I have to work for it. So we kind of balance each other out really well. We talk about this a lot because. A lot of people, they're in relationships with like a spouse who like doesn't support them on the keto diet or doesn't push them to follow their dreams or tells them they shouldn't do something. And it's like, you think you deserve that. So don't blame the partner. Of course. You know, take some accountability. And be I like, brought this up before and everyone got mad when I said everything is your fault. Well, that's, I think that's extreme. <laughs> I think not everything is your fault. You're, you're a victim of circumstance in terms of like your you upbringing. You set those circumstances. Okay. Yeah. Your, your upbringing, parents. you can't change. So what do you think you deserve? What do you deserve? What deserve? That we're just. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, one thing I was thinking of about the making you do what makes you happy thing is like, lately I've been getting interested in certain things and I feel kind of bad talking about them on our YouTube videos sometimes because I just feel like it's a little too extreme. People are just gonna be like, you guys are going off the deep end, but it's what I'm truly interested in. Like when we started doing Keto Connect, we were truly interested in keto diet, making baked goods with like these new low carb ingredients. I'm like, whoa, you can make yeah, real desserts that are low carb. That's really exciting. I want to learn about this. But now I'm more like learning about ancient diets and like the nutrient density of foods and like finding good locally sourced foods, stuff like that. The See, normal people don't care about that. They care about like what's a budget sale for keto foods at Walmart, you know? Well, I think you saying that is just like you looking for confirmation from the audience being no, like, I'm just sharing no, my share true it. thoughts. I don't think you should feel that way though. Why would yeah. you feel that way? It's your YouTube channel, one. Yeah. Two, it's genuinely what you're interested in. Even if people don't care about it, maybe they take some like little bit of knowledge away from it, right? Maybe. Like I didn't care about learning of League of Legends last night, but now if Matt's sitting down watching and I want to eat and like just watch with him, I at least I understand what's going on before I walk away after five minutes. All right, guys, we have a sponsor for this video. We have some delicious hunter gather pilly nuts and use the coupon code keto connect for 13% off. You yeah. didn't pull out the fa my favorite flavor though. Cause they're all gone. The cacao oh, ones. Oh, the cacao ones. Yeah, I destroy those. As soon as we get them, I'm just down in them. They're sprouted so the nutrients yeah. are more available to your body. Yeah. And the macros, 24 fat, one carb, one fiber, three protein, pretty much the perfect nut for keto. Eatpillynuts.com. What do you got there? I have half an avocado, um, half of the steak, some low carb barbecue sauce, and some carrots. So that's five ounces. And then the carrots, what I really like, I've been eating carrots at every single like lunch meal, no matter what. They're like so sweet and crunchy and they really satisfy that craving contrasted with like a savory steak or a savory meat. Nibble off a little bit and give Julius the other half. Hold oh. that up. He loves carrots. Yeah, he would be a vegan if we let him. He'd be like one of those rebellious teenage vegans. This is what I have. I have five ounces of the same steak. It's a New York strip steak. 
It's really rare. I have a half avocado, five eggs, just oh, like over cooked. Over easy? Yeah, over easy. I cooked it in the- Cast like, iron? Yeah, with all the fat from the steak, so. It came like out perfectly. That. Oh, and it's like three-ish? No, it's two. 3.15. Oh, it's 3.15. So yeah, a lot of you guys are really concerned about intermittent fasting. We don't really make it a staple of our lives. But sometimes it happens, and I had bulletproof coffee, so I wouldn't technically call it intermittent fasting. Yeah, and I had almond milk in my coffee, so we just eat when we're hungry or like after the gym. That's the most convenient, because I don't like to work out on a full stomach, yeah. so. So it's been like two hours uh -huh. since you last saw us. And I'm really hungry, so I figured instead of having a snack, I would just have dinner. So she's making fish, and she doesn't really like fish that much. This is the There's Julius on his carpet, like always. When I do too much, he gets mad. When I do not enough, he gets mad. You can't win with men. Oh, and while I was waiting, I had a fat bomb. One of these. It's mostly coconut oil. So these are the sea bass. Curious about how these taste. They're so little. I can like eat this entire thing in like two bites. Yeah, so I'm gonna have some other stuff too. I got my berries over here. I'm gonna have those after dinner. Some raspberries, and then in the bottom there's blackberries. And I heard a cool new saying about stuff that I want to tell you when we sit down. When did you hear it? Listen to you two. Nice. Are you excited about it? I am. I have two, these are four ounce sea bass fillets. Pretty tasty, I tasted a little bit of it. And then I have half of a six ounce salmon fillet, so three ounces. Actually I waited, it was 5.1 total. So like They're two. always cheating you. They say six ounces, it's always like closer to five. Yeah, so two and a half ounces. Your fillets aren't four. What are they? They're um, Three seven. There it is. I know, it's crazy. They're nickel and dime in us. So I have a three point seven ounce sea bass, a two point five <laughs> ounce salmon, and then I have a bunch of broccoli here. I was just really feeling it, that looks and good. I charred it up. Yeah, it's super good. Salt and pepper and garlic. So this is pretty high protein. The salmon has a good bit of fat, but other than that, the sea bass is mainly just protein. But I cooked it in ghee. Okay, so then I also have some berries, raspberries, blackberries. I've been having this as an after dinner snack. Since I have like no fat in my dinner basically, but I, I did have a fat bomb before. I'm gonna have some of these pilly nuts, half of this bag. So that is 24 grams of fat or something like that. Ooh, you have that chicken stick. We have a second, right? I'm gonna have this. This epic bar. It's not really fat either, but I just want it. I think I'll have that too. Because I, I was gonna make protein ice cream or something, protein. Yeah. Or like a collagen drink, like a tea. I've been getting these because these are only $2. Quest bars are $3, and this is just like actual food. It's not Better a science product. experiment. Mm -hmm. So I've been going towards these a little bit more. Oh, and the thing I wanted to tell you, it's kind of like weird. It's not that good of a saying, but I like it. Chew your, no. Drink your food and chew your water because you should be chewing your food enough to where you're basically drinking it, which is kind of like a weird and gross I've analogy. I've like 40 bites, 40 chews. I don't get anywhere per... near that. I do like five. No, but sometimes I count and I'm like pushing like 12 and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to swallow them I know. And then drink your water. This is the one I actually think is more important because there's all these idiots on the internet that are chugging gallons of water a day. They think it's good to be drinking a gallon of water a day. It's the worst idea. Basically, you should just be like sipping on water throughout the day, mm -hmm. mixing it with your saliva as you sip it. If you're just like chugging it, like it's the not drop, great stop, and you. chug challenge. Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah, it is because your body has to process all of it. No, but like a few years ago, when I was just like you know watching fitness people on YouTube, I thought drinking as much water as humanly possible was good. Was that, yeah? Of course, it's not good. Like back in the day, did people drink as much water as possible? No. Yeah, the sea bass is pretty good. It's definitely like it. on more on the fishy side, but. I really like it. How much water do you guys drink per day? I drink probably maybe like 40 ounces a day. So I drink like probably at least 80 ounces a day. So Some days I'll drink more though if I'm really thirsty. Well, what I learned about myself that I'm in constant conflict with, I'm like torn between the two is wanting optimal like gut health, brain health, just feeling really good internally because you know, I have a lot of like, I have a damaged metabolism. I have a damaged like immune system from all the medications I've been on. And then also wanting just to look really ripped and like focusing more on the outer as opposed to the inner. So it's like, it's yeah. a constant battle. It really is a battle. Most people focus exclusively on the outer. Yeah, most people for sure. Especially with the keto diet, it's like you're so focused on the weight loss, but there's so many incredible things that are happening internally we don't even think about. I think I've been focusing on the inner a lot more lately. Me too, for sure. For me, the powerlifting. Powerlifting. Has just like taking my body to another level. I've never felt like a, you know, a solid nine mm -hmm. at this time of year. 
Yeah. Like going into Christmas, I'm like a, a, a fluffy six. Yeah, and I think the big things for us is my psoriasis, trying to better that, and then your histamine, your eye bags, your sinuses. When you focus on something that's like purely health and like- It makes it a lot easier to stick to things. That's yeah. true. Yeah. If like my psoriasis went away and his sinuses were better as opposed to like, now I, I look shredded. We got to do another day of eating like someone soon. We could do the girl that was in Tomb Raider. We just watched it the other night. So Hor bad. Horrible movie. So bad. I'm just like the older I'm getting, the more cynical I get about like just that's so unrealistic. I don't no. even want to see it because it's not even plausible. Like whenever I see a movie like that, I'm always like, there's someone out there that that is their all time favorite movie and they're going to live the next 60 years of their life being like, you guys got to see Tomb Raider. And I think about that with a lot of things like Pitbull, the music artist, there's millions of people probably that are like Pitbull's their go-to artist. Yeah, they when see him in concert. So to me, I'm just gonna put this right out there. If Pitbull is your favorite music artist, one thing, you're probably not a very smart person. You definitely have no taste in music. Just like, what's going on in your life that you're just like, Pitbull's your guy? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It doesn't add up. Let me know if you guys know of anyone or if you are this person that Pitbull is your favorite music artist. But if he is, you must know something about him. So where did the nickname Mr. Universe come from? That's like, a good he question. He's not attractive. He's far from attractive. Mr. Universe. That's it, guys. We love you. And Deuces we for the mooses. Deuces for the mooses.